Do you want to get smarter? Can you get smarter or is your IQ fixed? Well, in today's Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast, we're going to give you the answer to that. And there's some good news. You can get smarter and we'll show you how to do it. So welcome to this month's Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast. Are you interested in property investing, success or money? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Michael Yardney Podcast, where each week you'll learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment and money in 20 minutes or less. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialise in helping you grow, protect and pass on your wealth through strategic property advice. Now here's your host, Michael Yardney, who has once again been voted Australia's leading property investment advisor. That's the fourth time he's won a similar award in the last six years. Have you ever wanted to get smarter? Well, according to the latest research, you can. You see, contrary to what was previously believed, your IQ is not fixed. I've found human beings are inherently competitive, and competitive in athletics, in politics, in personal wealth. We like to outrank others in comparison to all sorts of things, including intelligence. One of the most widely used and well known measurements of intelligence is the IQ test, which refers to a series of standardized tests believed to give a fair estimate of your intelligence relative to the rest of the population. So is IQ fixed or can it be changed? And the short answer is yes, it can be changed. Now, just a few years back, the IQ of a human was considered to be something that was genetic and can't be improved on. However, various researchers Lots of eminent scientists have actually spent time showing that that's the case. A Michigan University study revealed that at least one aspect of IQ, a person's fluid intelligence, which was previously considered to be fixed at birth, can actually be improved. In other words, it is fluid. You see, our brain is more plastic than researchers thought. They found that there's two sorts of intelligence, two types of intelligence, crystallized and fluid. Crystallized relies on the existing skills, your knowledge, your experience to solve problems by assessing information from long-term memory. But your fluid intelligence relies on the ability of understanding relationships between various concepts to solve problems. And that's independent of any knowledge, skills, or experience. So it actually is the bit of intelligence that can be improved. So how do you do this? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today with my friend Tom Corley, co-author of our best-selling book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. So welcome, Tom. Hey, Michael. It's good to be back. Now, Tom, some people think they're smart. Some people think they're dumb. Some people want to be smarter. I don't think anyone wants to be dumber. Is there a choice? Is IQ fixed or can we become smarter in life? Well. That's a great question, and the good news is there are a lot of recent studies out there which uh, indicate that your IQ can change during your lifetime. It can go up or it can go down. Uh, IQs are driven by synapses. Synapses are neurons that communicate with one another. Uh, So there are certain things, which I'm sure we're going to talk about, that can... uh, and really get your neurons activated, create synapses, grow those synapses over time, and thereby increase your IQ. It's very interesting, but in my Rich Habits study, a lot of the um, self-made millionaires were B or C students. Uh, And I'm sure at the time when they were young, when they would, would take an IQ test, it wouldn't have been very high. But because they pursued certain activities that increased their IQ, I guarantee you that those self-made millionaires grew their IQ probably 20, 30% from the time that they were young. And, and that's the, I guess that's the real message is your IQ is not fixed. It can grow, but you have to make it grow. You have to fertilize it. Well, there's a lot more to success in life than having a high IQ, but I don't think any of us would, uh, argue if you said, I'm going to show you some hints on how to get a better IQ, a higher intelligent quota, as it says. So tell me, Tom, what can I do to get smarter? Well, the whole thing is to 
engage in certain activities that uh, grow your brain cell. Now, your brain cell is made up, it's called a neuron. It's made up of the body, the dendrites, and uh, one axon branch. Now, when you do certain things like reading to learn or any type of learning, auditory, uh, you know, watching a video, visual learning, it depends on what type of learner you are. If you do a lot of studying, you try and take up a new skill uh, or you do things like uh, things that enge- really require novelty, so doing something new and different, even exercise, particularly aerobic exercise, that grows each of the neurons in your brain. And as your neurons grow, the myelin sheath around the axons thickens, and that increases the speed by which um, the electricity passes through each one of the axons. And so the idea is to do certain activities which increase the size of the neuron, increase the myelin sheath around the axons, and thereby increase the speed by which thoughts travel. So we're talking about certain activities that are going to make your brain grow. Is this a permanent thing, Tom, or is it a short-term thing? It's only permanent if you repeat the activities over and over again. So if you're if you're going to study for a month and then for the next 11 months do nothing but watch TV, uh, the neurons are going to lose their efficacy. They're going to shrink back to the normal size. It's like a muscle. You know, you can't just work out for a month and then 11 months na- later you still look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, you have to work out every single day. And by working out every single day, you're going to grow those neurons. They're going to get bigger and stronger. The muscles are going to grow. The neurons are going to grow, the axons are going to grow, the dendrites are going to grow. Uh, So you want to create habits that help grow and um, extend the the synapses in in your brain. It's really interesting because when you look at the list of activities that actually grow your axons, grow your dendrites and synapses that actually make you smarter, that's the same list of activities that you found in your Rich Habits, Poor Habits study are the activities that the successful people do, the rich people do. Actually, there's probably no coincidence in that, is there? No. Well, you know, that, that this is why I spent three years having to study the brain. I must have read about 15 books on the brain. Why? Because habits are brain-driven. They're created by the brain. The brain creates habits to save energy. Uh, to save brain fuel, because the brain uh, utilizes 20% of the oxygen and 20% of you know, the energy that you take in. It's all, 20% of that is used by the brain. So the brain has created these unique, really amazing things called habits so that they be- can become, a f- the brain can become efficient. Uh, so you, what you want to do is engage in habits that increase that efficiency that grow the brain and that that's you know that's why habits and the brain are are just joined at the hip they're one and the same so let's look at some of the activities that actually do this it's reading to learn or auditory learning you don't have to read you can listen hey to podcasts like this or visual learning watch videos studying um learning a new language always seems to be high on the list doesn't it tom or learning uh musical instruments doing something novel doing something different but it's not always learning or creating things, creative things like music or art or writing. Uh, interestingly, exercise is part of the, or one of the factors that can increase your, uh, how smart you are. Now, that's quite interesting, isn't it? It is. And, and here, let me give you the science behind it. So um, aerobic exercise increases the amount of oxygen that you take in. Uh, and that oxygen is critical to um, helping each brain cell maintain its health. Uh, Oxygen permeates the cell wall at the neuron. The the inside, uh, the mitochondria uh, start, use the oxygen and combine it with glucose primarily, but also could be ketones. Uh, And it's like a a tiger on the Serengeti. It starts ripping apart the uh, fuel, the glucose or the ketones, and uh, the oxygen helps catalyze that. In other words, it helps do that ripping process. 
the other thing that oxygen does, it helps clean up. It's a mop-up crew. So after you've done ripping apart the carcass, that's glucose or ketones, oxygen swims around and it soaks up all of these, what they call free radicals, which are uh, electrons that are just floating around and could do damage within the cell. And then the oxygen cat is then leaves the cell membrane. It floats into the bloodstream. It makes its way to the lungs. And then it's exhaled in the form of carbon dioxide. So uh, th this aerobic exercise is really critical to maintaining uh, brain health. It's also the, the other thing uh, with weightlifting. So if you lift weights, it increases the production of uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor, uh, which is like miracle grow for the brain. This BDNF through exercise, physical exercise, uh, lifting weights, muscular exercise, that uh, increased BDNF makes its way into the brain cell. It, it increases the size of the neuron it increases the size of the axon and the dendrites, and it also aids in creating this insulation, which we call the myelin sheath around the axon. And that myelin sheath is critical because the thicker it is, the faster that neuron fires, and that defines your IQ. So if you're engaging in aerobic exercise and physical weightlifting exercises, uh, you're actually increasing, improving the health of your neurons and increasing the size of the neurons. That must be why I feel smart today because I've just finished my walk before we sat down to have uh, the, the, this <laughs> chat, Tom. Um, but it's interesting that I've just noticed a lot of people around me, maybe it's the age I'm getting, or people in, in the news seem to be suffering more with, with dementia. But a lot of these things that you've mentioned, maybe it's because we're just living longer and getting older, uh, but, but a lot of these things that you've mentioned are also the things that seem to stop people getting dementia. Yeah, it's true. And, and you know, the sad part is we live in a society of instant gratification, and instant gratification comes in many forms, entertainment being one of them. So we like to be entertained. Uh, and uh, what entertains most of us is the TV. Uh, of course, you know, there's the internet, YouTube, watching uh, kittens on YouTube. Uh, you know, the, it's just so many distractions out there that can offer entertainment to us, but no learning no growth of the brain cells, no, no challenging the brain to uh, work harder through novelty and learning a new skill and new language, things like that. We're just kind of um, spectators. And uh, when you're a spectator, your brain cells are not growing. In fact, they're shrinking. So what you're saying is uh, playing on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram makes you dumber? Oh, it, it, it shrinks your IQ, it, it lowers your IQ, shrinks the brain cells, lowers your IQ. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, you, because it's a habit, uh, you're doing it by yourself. There's isolation, you're homebound, uh, and you're not exercising when you're doing it. Uh, so it's not doing any good to your brain. Now, that's interesting. It opens up a whole new argument about what we should be doing with our children who, when you and I were young, uh, would go outside and play and be doing more physical activities. And today they're more likely to be uh, sitting on their iPad uh, watching YouTube or, or playing games. Yeah, the, there's still, there's still, the argument's still out on the video games. Uh, I've been, re read research and studies that go both ways. Uh, the video games can, it depends on the game, but it can actually increase uh, neural activity. It all depends on the game. It's when you're a spectator, when you're not doing anything, uh -huh. uh, like watching TV, Michael, that's really uh, when, when you're losing out on, on increasing and improving your brain. You really don't want to be a spectator. So if you think of anything that you do where you're a spectator, where you're watching and you're not interacting and engaging, you know, you could look at social media, too. You know, I do a lot of social media because of my books. So do you. And one of the things that I found very interesting is I, I have a lot of people, a lot of victims, a lot of people that believe that uh, rich people are bad and poor people are good, and they engage me. I, I am telling you, when I get involved with those 
interactions, there's a lot of brain activity going on. Yep. So when, when you shift from being a spectator to being an actor, uh, that's when you engage the brain. Well, this is really fascinating. So the message today is your IQ is not fixed at birth. It's not related to your genetics. Uh, in fact, your habits, what you do, what you do regularly can either help you become smarter or less intelligent. So good habits will help grow your IQ. On the other hand, bad habits will cause your IQ to decrease. And if you want to understand a bit more about good habits or bad habits, why not have a look at our book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits? Go to richhabitspoorhabits.com and you can order your own copy or find it on Amazon or any other good online bookstore. Tom, thank you very much. Always having fun having these conversations with you. I learned so much from you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, same here, Michael. We, we're a good team. Well, that's it for another Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast. I bring you these on the first Thursday of each month in between my regular weekly Michael Yardney podcasts. What you've learned today is that if you want to be smarter, you can. And interestingly, the way you get smarter is much the same way as you get more successful in all areas of your life by developing some rich habits and by getting rid of some poor habits, by having some different beliefs that are going to lead to different actions that are going to give you different results in all areas of your life. Look forward to having a chat with you again real soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Michael Yardney podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property advice. If you got value from listening to this podcast, please leave us a review and we'll read it out on a future show. Just go to michaelyardneypodcast.com forward slash review and it will take you over to iTunes where you can enter a review and let us know what you think. We'd really appreciate it. If you don't already subscribe on iTunes or on your Android phone, you'll find us there as Michael Yardney Podcast. If you'd like to gain instant access to the show notes or a transcript of the show, head across to michaelyardneypodcast.com. Watch out for our show next week. You learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 20 minutes.